Hi guys, this is Edna with Square Photography and today we're going to go over the basics of retouching. So today I'm going to teach you how to use curves. I'm going to teach you how to do cloning, like the basics of cloning to uh, pick up imperfections, remove imperfections. And I'm going to teach you the most important one of all, liquefy. Dude, if you are a chick, this is what every chick wants. Unless you're like super body positive, but I live in Orange County and all the women here are unbelievably insecure and want to see themselves anorexic. So, um, yeah, here in beautiful, sunny Southern California to look like this is obesity, the way that I look. So I'm going to teach you guys how to do some liquefying. So here's my chunky, chunky booty right here. And I'm going to teach you how to clone so that I can retouch an image. So you can learn how to retouch the basics. So those are the three things we're going to do today. Here is the image that we used last time, and I'm going to teach you how I go about retouching an image. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to liquefy myself, make myself skinnier in this photo, a little bit thinner, a little bit curvier. And we're going to go that, do that by going to filter, liquefy. Now you can also, also press shift control X, right? Shift control X. And there's the liquefy panel. Now I want to bring in my arm just a little bit on this side. And I'm going to pull this away. You can make your size bigger here and the pressure of the brush here. So if we go with a lot of pressure, see that? But if we soften up the pressure a little bit, then it's it's softer. So we want it a little bit soft. These are the one, these are this is what I use. And um, maybe a little bit here, bringing it in. Maybe make my leg a little bit thinner. I'm just being ridiculous here. I, I, I don't retouch the, I didn't retouch any of these photos when I posted them, but if I wanted to, uh, I would have. So, um, like, let's say bring in my tummy a little bit right there. And if I want to come in closer to do some liquefying, that's closer than again, shift control X. And let's say I want to bring in my, my double chin up, right? I can do that. And I'm going to show you guys how to keep things from not moving around too much. Like if, let's say I have, I want to Photoshop something here. I want to bring in this back area here, but I don't want this grass to move. So I would just go here to this freeze mask tool and I would freeze the grass right here. And I would Photoshop this area. See? Press OK. And there you go. You got to Photoshop that area and I'm going to show you the before and after. So that's the before and that's the after. And I'm going to show you again on this photo because this photo needs a lot of help. So I usually go section by section, like I'll do an arm, right? So, and then you don't want to Photoshop like this because then you're going to see the lines down here, right? So for this section, I'd Photoshop this way the same way as my, the, this line is headed. So here I have some leeway because this line is here so I can Photoshop here, right? Right here. So that's how I'd Photoshop my arm, my chunky arm. So there you go. And if you shoot very like soft in your background with very shallow depth of field, then you can get away with a lot more retouching because you don't see all of the texture being uh, manipulated in the background. So that would be just my arm. See that? I probably went too far there. I wouldn't go that far. I'd just do a little bit. You, know, you always want people to look just like a slightly better version of themselves. You don't want to go too crazy. There we go. So that's better for me, I think. Like if I were to really Photoshop this how I wanted, that's how I would do it. Now I'd bring in my waist. I like to have a smaller waist. So I would photo, I would liquefy my waist just a tad. Again, you gotta be careful because you can't just go like this. You're gonna see this line here is gonna move. So you wanna go with that, the flow of this area. So a little waist is nice. Smaller waist doesn't have to be little, but a smaller waist. And then I'm going to do the other side. Let's cancel out of there. You can use your marquee tool and 
and you can get a big brush and just sort of tug the whole thing in. You see that? Like just, just tug the whole thing in. So just like that. That'll give you a little waste. I'm going to teach you guys later on how to make, like if you didn't want to tug this whole arm in, how to actually copy your background and put a layer mask over it and how to fix that. So let's say I wanted to bring my hip in here, but I don't want to touch the arm because the arm is going to get liquefied with it. You can go smaller, but I don't like to go smaller. I like to freeze that arm, right? And keep a nice big round brush and liquefy it just like this. And press OK. And here's the before and here's the after. It's not a humongous difference, but it's a difference enough that your client is going to like the image. Like I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I'm all about body positivity. I didn't retouch these photos when I put them up in Photoshop because I love myself exactly how I am. But I will tell you that my clients choose their images, especially my plus size clients. They always choose their images by how they look. So I've just started telling my client, like, listen, don't worry about it. I can fix anything you're uncomfortable with. Don't worry about how you look. You got, you know, your arm is pushed a particular way that you don't like. Don't worry about it. I can fix anything in Photoshop. I just want you to have fun and relax and enjoy the day, like not stress about how you're looking in photographs, right? Because we can do anything in Photoshop. We can make them look a little better. And a lot of times, you know, for a wedding album that's going to be forever, people want to look their best. And people have been re-photoshopping and retouching. I mean, all the Harrell photographs from the 1930s glamour photos, those are all completely retouched by pencil right on negative. So, so here, my little double chin, I'm going to teach you guys how to do that, okay? So come on in, or shift control x zoom in. You can zoom in with control plus or you can just zoom in here with the, with the zoom. And I'm going to freeze my chin area. So I'm going to freeze my chin area right there like that. And you can erase. So let's say I'm going to erase a little bit more of this so that I can bring it up a little higher. And then you can liquefy. Oh, I'm going to freeze my, my shirt here so it doesn't get affected. And then you can liquefy your double chin just like that. See how I'm pushing up towards the way that the skin would naturally go. And you don't want to go super ridiculous. It's just a little bit, right? You don't want people not to look like themselves. Press OK. Look at that. Do you see that, guys? I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. it makes a big difference. Look at that. And then you can go in and start cloning all of this and lowering the the shoulders a little bit like chunky people like myself our our shoulders are always a little bit high so it's nice to lower them lower the shoulders a little bit and give chunky people a nicer svelter longer neck it's always nice lower those shoulders there you go all of a sudden i'm going from chunky to skinny all right, so that's um, a little bit of the liquefying. I don't think I need anything else. I think this is a nicer version of me. Again, I didn't, I, I didn't Photoshop these images when I put, put them in Photoshop. I was glad to have them the way that they are. I think it's a little bit exaggerated for me. But this is what you can do with Photoshop. So I'm going to show you guys the before and after. I'll zoom in here. So that's the before. And that's the after. So that'll be me in about 20 pounds. But this is me now. <laughs> so that's how you liquefy, guys. Now we're going to talk about retouching. Um, so I liquefied this one already a little bit. And I want to retouch the face. So um, I don't feel like I personally, like, again, I didn't retouch these images when I posted them of myself. I think I look amazing. I've been doing Botox since I was 32 years old. So for being 45, almost 46 years old, I look hella good and I'm okay with how my face looks. Okay. But, um, <laughs> but, um, I'm going to remove everything that I did before. And if I wanted to, because a lot of times when I shoot my friends, I'll, I'll have them come and sit right next to me. And, you know, the things that they're concerned about are obviously things that I want to address. So 
for me, this little scar here, I would use the little spot healing tool and I would just start going over any like small imperfections like this and that. Anytime where I see something like a mole or something I want removed, then I would start working with that first. So right now I think that looks pretty good. I have a little scar there. Do I have anything else anywhere else that I need? Nope. I think oh, there, I can remove this mole. So little imperfections you can start removing with, sorry, with that. And then I would go directly to the clone tool and I would start softening up my skin just a little bit like this area here at a 35, a flow of like maybe 80, 87. And I would just grab from different areas, but areas that have the same lightness. So here you can see there's a little bit of lightness here. I would just soften this up. And here we're only grabbing from these areas just to grab any of that, the texture on my skin. And see if you have a little, little hair like this, again, we can go back to the, that patch tool or the healing brush tool and just remove that like right here. And here there's one here and that's it. And see, I don't like the little nose pores, so I can just soften those up with the clone brush again, moving in the same direction as the skin. Okay. So you would not bring this lightness over to this darkness, right? Any little scars or anything. And then these little wrinkles here, I'm grabbing from here, grabbing from here. And then I'm grabbing from this area because this area here, this dark shadow is in the same area. So I'm grabbing from there and make sure that you don't have repetitiveness. So go through and change that. And then I'm going to lighten up these lines underneath my eyes by clicking right underneath here, just lightening them. You don't want to remove them completely. It looks bizarre. You look like an alien, but you just want to lighten them. And the same thing here, you're following the same line of light. So lightest to darkest and you start here and then you start here. And I'm always moving around, like not grabbing from exactly the same area. And if I want to soften up these pores, I can do that too, just by going through with that brush, the clone brush and cloning. Uh, everything else, uh, I'm going to come in really close here. I see a little tiny something there, maybe a piece of skin. And then I'm going to remove that. Here. Nobody's going to come in this close to a photograph, but sometimes I get neurotic. If I want to brighten my teeth, this is the time that I would go to the lasso tool and I would just lightly grab my teeth just like this. If you over grab, press alt. And I would soften that by maybe 10. So shift F6, which is the feather tool, or you can go to filter and, and uh, I'm sorry, select and then feather it also. But I'm going to feather that by like 10. And then I'm just going to brighten it. So press Control M for curves and then brighten. So I'm going to teach you guys curves next. That's what we're going to do. So um, curves is the way to lighten and darken and add warmth or coolness to your image. Now you can go to Im every tool you're going to use for photographs, or most of them are going to be here under the adjustment, brightness and contrast, levels, curves, and exposure. Now, if you go to exposure, you can just brighten and darken here, right? But the problem is you're not, you're, let's say your highlights are already too bright and you don't want to bring them up brighter. You don't have a lot of control there. So the only adjustments that I use for brightening and darkening is curves and curves is control M. Okay. And here you see curves. This is a histogram. For those of you don't, who don't know what a histogram is, it's a portrait of your image in data between darkest and lightness. So this is the dark areas and this is the light area. So all of this area here is probably the sidewalk, all this. 
This mid-range tone is probably this area of my dress. This dark right here is probably my hair right here because it's a little spike right here of darkness, but it still has um, texture. So if this area, if you brighten something and you press OK and you go back to Control M, you see how the histogram changed? Oh my God, all of a sudden you've lost all the detail in your, sh in your, in your highlights. You're clipping all your highlights because it's not a full bell curve. So I'm going to cancel and go back right now here. I'm not clipping any highlights. These are my highlights here and they're a full bell curve, meaning no darks are clipped off and no lights are clipped off because there's, sh there's detail on everything. Once this goes over to the right more, then you're starting to lose detail on the highlights. And if this shifts over to the left, you're losing detail in the shadows. So for me, I like nice, bright, contrasty images, but not too bright, not too contrasty. So a little bit brighter. And I always bring up a little bit on the top right hand side. I just bring it up just a tad. And if you want to add contrast, you drop down as an S curve. That's your contrast right there. You see that? That adds contrast. So that's the way you get a little bit of contrast by making a little S curve. Now this is a very not exaggerated S curve. You can go much more of an S curve and do a lot more contrast. But most of the time, if you're exposing properly, you're not going to need much. I'm going to brighten this image just a little bit and I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. If you don't like contrast, you don't have to. You can bring that up a little bit and make it like a matte image, right? So just a tad of contrast. And let's say my image wasn't properly, like let's say it was blue because I was in the shade and we weren't properly exposed, right? It would look something like this. Then I would go into the blue channel and I would drop the blue down and add warmth. See how it's starting to go yellow? So that's how you add a little bit of warmth by dropping a little bit of the blue and you can even add a little bit of red to add a little bit of warmth. Okay. And let's say you're underneath something like a green tree and you're getting a lot of green cast and you would go to green and you would remove a little bit of green. It makes it slightly magenta. Or again, if you add green, then you're adding green. This image was very properly exposed. So I, I'm, I really just want to brighten it up a tad, like just a tad and give it just the tiniest bit of contrast, very little because I think it looks great. All right, so I think this image looks awesome. I'm going to remove, I think that's my bra right there. So I'm going to show you guys how I would do this. So I would take the polyagonal tool and I would grab my jacket right here and then I'd grab the yellow right here and I'd soften it quite a bit because you see this area is very blurred. So if you make a selection right now and you go in and you clone it, see how harsh that line looks? You don't want that. What you want is to soften up that line so that it looks like the rest of the lines here. So we're going to go to Shift F6, which is feather, and we're going to feather that by, I'm going to say 15, and then we're going to clone it. And then there was a little darkness here on this area. So this is the area. There was a little shadow where I would go to the burn tool and I would add a little bit of burning right here just to bring back that area the way it looked. And there you go. And it looks like it belongs there. Like we didn't do anything that this softness of where we cloned is the same as this softness up here. It's a huge mistake that people's ma people make. Now I'm going to remove this little button with the healing brush tool just like this. That looks awesome. And I think that looks like a perfect image, guys. I wouldn't do very much more to it. You don't want to over retouch your images, get in the habit of going a little under instead of a little over. I always tend to over Photoshop. And then I look back, I'm like, oh, that was too much. I should have done less. So, and again, remember you can always go back. Like I like to brighten and darken Here's a clone problem. So when I went into liquify, I went a little over the, the lines. Okay. So here's the thing. If you lighten and darken at the end and then look at your image and see if you want to change anything with the history brush tool, 
it's going to take it to its original place. So it was darker because we brightened it up a bit. So wait to lighten and darken at the end of the image after you've done all the liquefying and everything. So if you need to bring anything back, you can always bring something back with the history brush tool. But if I had brightened this a lot, watch, and then I went in with the history brush tool, see how it's way darker. So you don't want to do that. You want to wait until the very end to make those corrections of brightening and darkening. That's, that's how I do it. I liquefy and take care of all of the um, imperfections first. Then I check it out, make sure if I need to bring something back, I'll bring something back. Like I always tend to under overdo the eye area. So I'll bring a little bit of it back because I don't want to look much, much younger than I already do. <laughs> And that's how, that's the basics, guys. That's the basics of liquefying. That's the basics of cloning. That's the basic basics of curves. Control M again is curves, guys. Remember, up is bright, down is dark. And to get a little contrast, it's up on the top left hand and down on the bottom right hand. That gives you contrast. Um, and then you can change right here in the RGB section if you want to warm something up or remove green or add magenta or anything that you want to do. And that's it, guys. So that is literally the base. And most of the time when you have an image, that's all you're going to need to do to it is those three little things. That's, it's very rare when you're going to have to get in and do anything else to your Im images other than that if you're having if you have good exposures you barely have to touch it in photoshop you might have to do just a little bit of like blemishes and softening up pores and things like that but you're probably not going to have to do a lot of color correction or density correction which is brightness and darkness so try to really nail your images in camera so that you don't have to work hard in photoshop like really you know Getting into Photoshop and working harder in Photoshop means you're making less money because time is uh, money. Time is money. Money is time. So try to really nail it in camera, guys. Anyways, if you have any questions, leave a comment below. Leave a comment below anyways. Just say thanks, Edna, or this was great or whatever because the algorithm of YouTube, whenever you leave comments, it makes it so that it's uh, more searchable and it brings it up higher in the search when there's more comments. So just comment for me, anything, do me a favor and comment. And, um, if you guys want to send in any images that you're having a hard time retouching, I'll try to get to some interesting retouching images and show you how I solve particular problems. So you can always email me or contact me through here, message me and let me know and I can send you my email address, my actual email address if you guys have any questions. So don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, don't forget to have an amazing day and don't forget to choose happiness, guys, because it's a choice. It's a choice. Get up every day, feel gratitude and do this thing. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out and ask. That's what I'm here for. I am here to be of service for you. So I am here to be of service for you guys. So please ask away. Have a great one, guys.